With a single sentence, I can get you on board for this game. You can pet the dogs. Of course, there are a boatload more reasons why you should play this game. The first one being, if you played Frostpunk and loved it, but thought, I wish the story got a little more personal. I wish I could actually know my citizens and build relationships with them, put them in the right spots, doing the right jobs. The Pale Beyond's for you. Uh, rather than having this large city with named but nameless citizens, you take care of an intimate crew on a ship. Now, you don't start off in charge. Crew wanted. Able-bodied crew wanted for dangerous expedition. Months of darkness, low wages, slim chance of safe return. Glory to be had in the event of success. That sounds... promising. <laughs> you start your journey with an interview with Captain Hunt. During this interview, you reveal a little bit more about yourself, both to him and to yourself. You learn that your name is Robin Shaw, and then you start to get to make some choices. Were you born a landlubber or a sea dog? Okay, so this is obviously going to start having some mechanical uh, thingamabobs. I'm gonna say saltborn going along with, like, I've already been super adventurous. I think I'd like to go... This is very cool, setting up like a story. I don't know how much, uh, obviously the ones that like went ding have some sort of uh, effect on the game. Uh, but even just like having a story in the back of my head, being like a role play person um, is very fun to me. These first choices do have an impact on your gameplay. Later on, when you start talking to people and examining objects on the old ship, you'll see story. the little things pop up like, oh, you're a merchant? You get to know this, or you have this option in dialogue. And so that automatically opens you up for replayability. That replayability is built in in a super cool way. I saw this done in another game. Same publisher, not done. It's called Beacon Pines. And basically they've set up a save tree, which means there are certain parts in the story where you can go back and start again, but you're not starting again. You are simply creating a new branch on the tree, which means you don't lose what you've done. If you decide, oh, I want to see how that week would have gone differently, but I don't want to lose this story, you can do that. And I think that's very cool. When it comes to learning how the game works, I think they've set it up very well. What they've done is they've created a prologue, which is the same thing as a tutorial, but far more narrative. Uh, it kind of splits all of that like mumbo jumbo up. He thinks for a moment before stepping aside and stretching out a wrinkle. The first thing that you start learning is you go, you talk to Captain Hunt once you get on the ship and you learn about zooming and panning. That is the most boring one that you possibly could. And it was still put in in a narrative way, allowing you to take the helm of the ship, which in the rest of the time that I've played has not been something that we've done. Waves are gone. Okay. The memory in your muscles rear themselves as you begin to move in time with the ship. Or try to get a sense of where we are. Get some perspective. Useful. The next piece of mechanics that you start learning comes in the same sort of way. Again, it's set up within the narrative, which I think is a really good way to do a tutorial rather than just like dumping a bunch of stuff for you to read. The day goes through three phases. Uh, you start in the morning, and the first thing that you do in the morning is taking requests from the crew. Our first morning of taking requests starts with us learning all of the resources that we're going to have to take care of um, as the first mate. The first one is decorum. Basically, you can look at this as morale of the crew or happiness or contentedness, that sort of thing. If de decorum ever makes it to zero and does not get bumped up above that by the end of the week, your expedition is over. Next, you learn about food, which if you don't have enough food at the end of the week will leave one or more of your crew malnourished. The next is fuel, keeping things hot. You are going through icy waters. It's cold. If you don't have enough fuel, 
one or more of your crew will become freezing. Malnourished and freezing aren't the end of the world, but they can get worse. Malnourished can become scurvy and freezing can become frostbite at this point. Those crew members cannot work and it may lead to their death. The final resource we have are those dogs I talked about. We have sled dogs, and so that's a resource that we can use in order to go scouting. So during these requests, basically your crew members come to you with reports, with requests, asking for tasks, asking for people to be assigned to certain jobs. Um, and they all are just a conversation, uh, like this one with Cordell, the dog lady. Once you've taken care of all of those requests, you will go to the midday, which is basically you have free reign to run around talking to crew members, taking care of resources, following up on any of those tasks that you were asked to do through those requests. During the prologue, you're a little bit more limited in what you can do, but once you finish the prologue, you uh, can go about making sure that you do actually have everything that you need. Uh, the prologue definitely sets you up to not necessarily have those things, but that's to teach you what happens if you don't. Um, I do personally like having this set up this way because it does allow you to learn what happens when you do the wrong thing, as well as not overwhelming you with too much stuff to start off with. So for feeding the hush pot or, you know, keeping your food up, you're going to go into the pantry, grab some tins, or if you've been hunting, you'll also have things from that in your inventory and you can feed it the hush pot. Uh, as for fuel, you can go down to the very bottom of the ship. There is a room beside the boiler where you can grab some coal or assign people to do this. Uh, and then you go into the boiler room and you feed the boiler. Once you're ready to switch to the evening, it's time to call the crew for dinner. Hopefully you have fed your hoosh pot. Everybody will sit down, eat, might have like a little bit of a conversation. They will put up their cots. And then again, you have free reign of the ship. Things have changed a little bit. Uh, you can start listening in on conversations shown by a little icon on the map. You can, again, interact with some crew members. It depends what's going on, who you can interact with. Uh, once you're past the prologue, there are a couple of people that you can always interact with at that point. Uh, because you can find them in their rooms. Once you're done with your week, you will end the week and you will be brought to a screen in order to assign how much food and how much fuel you are going to use. Of course, you should always try to use enough to keep everybody healthy, but sometimes you won't have enough. And it will show you that some of your crew is going to be malnourished or freezing or both. Once you've confirmed those orders, you'll be brought to a screen with a little bit of a synopsis of what happened that week, and then it will switch over to the next week. As the weeks go on, you do have a little bit more to do each week. On the second week during your request, you're given the opportunity to assign people to a job. You can choose to do it or choose not to, and both choices will have consequences. Now, as far as the story goes, we're still in the prologue on week three, but that's when big changes begin to happen. So you're going to have some kind of spoilers here, but I think you knew they were coming. Captain Hunt is nowhere to be found. Some bad things happen. I'll leave that to you to figure out when you get there. But by the beginning of week four... He's still nowhere to be seen, and the crew is put to vote whether or not you are to step in as acting captain. Now, I feel like it's probably set up that it's always going to be you, but I think there's probably some things you can do to change how many people vote for you, but also... Maybe it's possible for your expedition to end there. Again, replayability will tell us I have not done that yet. Uh, so keep an eye on the channel because I'm really enjoying the game and I'll probably get to it. Uh, once the prologue's over, a couple of things are definitely added in. You now have a doctor with a med bay and also access to creating medical comforts with the scientists. Um, a map allows you to send people out scouting and once you've scouted, you can then hunt or find supplies. This was the only mechanic that tripped me up a little bit, but I think it was probably a me problem and not a game problem. But just in case you get caught up on it too, uh, once you've scouted, even that same day, you can send somebody else there. 
Because the first scout is just going to tell you what's there, and the second scout will actually pick up these resources. Um, also, on that second expedition, uh, or whatever, the, that second outing, um, you don't have to send a scout. The scout really just has to be the first one at the site. The other mechanic that I'd like to bring up is loyalty. Basically, the way that this works is all of the specialists, uh, they can be loyal to you or not, and then all of the other people are loyal to one of those specialists. So if you get one of them on board with you, then all of the people who are loyal to that specialist will also be loyal to you. There are a couple other things that happen, but I think the game is very good at teaching you what needs to be done. Um, and so I'm going to leave those to you to figure out on your own or come back and watch some other gameplay of it as I get through the game. I just kind of want to avoid giving away too much of the story um, because the story is so good and is the main point of the game. Uh, overall, I really enjoyed it. Highly recommend you checking it out yourself. Uh, and this is only after about three hours of play, so I guess technically my opinion could change for the worse, but I really don't see that happening. Uh, the ambiance is calming. When the music swells, it's for a reason. It was really easy to figure out how to play, minus the scouting thing. The story is engaging, and the art style really goes along with the story, in my opinion. I love that your choices really do matter, and again, I also absolutely adore being able to go back to a different week and create a new branch of saves. I remember when I played Beacon Pines, that was the first thing that I was like about, so I'm so glad that it's in this game as well.